update. Day of a house flipper. Finally got permits about six and a half weeks in. We're also buying another property tomorrow. It is not looking as profitable as when I first went there. It's gonna be our fourth flip and I am struggling emotionally with that one mentally. And I'm gonna talk in depth about that. We're gonna really kind of dive into the mental side of this stuff because I think what overshadows house flipping a lot. Um, and we're gonna go in here and show an update of this house as well. And you know, we're, we're listing another property that's not selling right now. So I think that the mental side of house flipping right now is the hardest freaking thing in the world to deal with and it makes you want to you know kind of just quit and you know fuck this i'm done with it man i can't take this so you kind of keep taking these hits but i had a very crucial phone call conversation with somebody and it completely reversed my whole entire psyche so you're going to want to you know see that that'll be in the middle of this video we're going to be you know talking about that conversation i had and then we're going to break down the mental side of you know now i'm looking to scale this thing and you got three projects going it's everything you wanted but there's so many things that just continue to happen and so when you hear these people talk about all these incidents you know that happen in house flipping i'm going to show it and document it like i have been so this is going to be a typical like a real life day of house flipping right real results that can happen so and i'm a glass half full guy so there's a positive in anything. We're learning so much and I'm, and I'm teaching you guys. So follow me today. We're going to check out the new property that we bought. Uh, disaster. And then we're going to check out inside of this house. Uh, and then we'll check out the house that we're listing as well as we're going to have some, some mental talks today about house flipping in general. So let's get after this crazy day. Well, woke up at three in the morning with a full blown fucking panic attack. This house flipping is not easy. In fact, thank God I got good people in my corner. I text Hard Money Joe this morning and I said I woke up at 3 a.m. having a mini panic attack. And let me tell you, it wasn't mini. A uh, honey cut won't sell. Homan permits and in the inspections and now buying a house, draining my money, not being as good as I thought. Is this the life of a flipper? My goodness, he said, yes. Sorry to tell you that it is. I think get these three sold and then focus on Kingwood flips, but You'll be fine. They all will sell. Uh, I've had the exact same panic attack many times. Wholesaling as a big operation led me to always having to close on them and thing, uh, thing up li liquidity. I don't know what that, but think of and think up of liquidity. When you own a ton of houses that aren't moving and still have to make payroll, it's freaking scary. All right, I'm about to go sign on my fourth house flip. You can hear it in my voice. I had a full blown panic attack. We're gonna talk about it, but. This is kind of what happened here. I'm gonna bring this up just so you can see it. I gotta go sign on this. Uh, what I have to bring to the table is $31,276,000. I'm gonna explain in detail like exactly what happened. So this kind of went from like a, re a really good deal to now kind of looking like, oh, my goodness, like this is a little bit scary. So the reason I got to come so much out of pocket, even using hard money is because our budget really, really increased. And there's the budget line item, 75,850. And since they're only really covering, you know, 176,250 on the loan, it left about 20, let's see, 22,000 extra dollars that I got to come out of pocket. So this is what I'm going to go sign on this. Now I'm going to break it down and, and I'm going to talk about just dude, flipping is flipping is flipping hard and just be as raw and honest as I can be. You guys have been following me. I've been documenting this entire house flipping business from the ground up. And today it's going to be as raw and honest as it can get. Like there's just no other way around it. If you want to there's peaks and valleys and, and, and I'm down in the valley, like down in the bottom. So what happened, what I feel like, how I'm getting out of it, and then how you, you know, go forward on this. So if you want a real one, listen to this story. I've surrounded myself with good people. I talked to my contractor. I've been on the phone right now. It's a little after 1 p.m. on a Wednesday. I'm supposed to close on that. Well, fourth flip, Shore Acres here, go sign. And in the middle of the night, I had a full-blown panic attack. Like, I am telling you, I've never really gone through that. If you guys have, you probably know what I feel, but it was like an out-of-body experience. It literally woke me up. I, I like just saw all this negativity. I'm telling you, I've never dealt with anything like that, but this is the life of a house flipper. Like house flipping is tough and I'm doing exactly what I wanted to do. Two, three, four flips at a time, but then all of a sudden reality sets in. So I made an entire list of things that I just wanna be brutally honest with you guys about and where I'm at with my house flipping journey. Just started house flipping now about 120 days ago. Um, these are realistic 
results. This is like what actually happens. Plus, I'm gonna take you out and show you a couple of these properties. So if you're new here, I have literally documented every day of starting a house flipping business from the ground up. And I've got notes, so I'm gonna be looking at them. So if you see me looking down, I'm just reading my notes. I don't wanna edit any of this. I don't want it to you know, seem fake. Uh, so I want to really break it down. But I also don't wanna discourage you because you know that happened obviously in the middle of the night and my wife got it with me and we talked and 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 i'm gonna and then i'm gonna tell you what i did throughout the day that is kind of you know reversed that a little bit i'm still terrified this deal that i'm gonna go sign for i gotta put way too much money into it but i've had some serious conversations but i'm gonna break it down for real for real and i the reason i think you would mainly want to listen to this video is because when you enter into this which i think everybody should get into investing and if you're watching this you are interested in it you're gonna go through these peaks and valleys and you only hear about about them in podcasts and, and, and videos, but it's typically somebody who is now completely surpassed that and they've got a whole system and they're doing a hundred flips or they own a hundred properties and they're making millions and they'll kind of lightly go over you know the pain oh man i lost all my money i was down in the dirt but then i figured it out and it's like a 10 second like i lost all my money i'm going to tell you what it's like when you are right in that stage like i am in it right now as we speak and so when you go through this stuff maybe you can revisit this video or my words or whatever or the way that i you know talk to people is gonna help you get through it to know that you're not alone. And that's one thing that, you know, so I, I showed you obviously the, the message and, and Hard Money Joe did wholesaling for five years and then he flipped for five years. So he's had many ups and downs and then even the buy and hold, you know, which he's got a lot of properties and you can't find renters and, and bills are due, it becomes tough. But I do know, you know, you talk to a lot of these people and even him and he's like, you know, you get to a certain point, Bill, everything, you know, gets paid off and, and uh, no. Unfortunately, there are some situations where you can really lose a lot of money. It may take you out of the game, but for the most part, if you surround yourself with good people and good resources like I have, luckily, you know, when starting this, I've been able to not only mentally get out of this, but I know, you know, monetarily I will as well. So the other aspect of this that I want to touch on is that if you're going at this alone, that might be a, a different, you know, I joined into this house flipping thing with my wife, and this is something we wanted to do together. And so what kind of also led up to some of this panic attack is that this is something we wanted to do together. This is something that she's been passionate about. And the very first flip we did was up in our neck of the woods. It was a more expensive home. More can go wrong, but at the same time, there was more design process. Like she was very involved in it. And so I was like, let's do this. I, I you know, got something for her. And then we started doing these smaller ones. They're less to get into, you know, less can go wrong. Cause even the, the three that I have right now, I could technically rent these things out, cash flow them, even do, I talked to Hard Money Joe today. He's like, you could do a 30 year DSCR loan on that, you know, and you'd be able to actually pull and recoup some of your cash and do a long-term rental. So you're not in a bad situation. So those are also ways that I've gotten out of this. We're gonna really get deep, but I realized, and I think this is what happens with most flippers, most, and, and some of the gurus and stuff is they, they kind of get their ass kicked for a little bit or, or for a long bit. And then they start realizing what they truly love, what their passion is, what they're good at, what, okay, this I make money at, this I'm getting good at, this I'm knowledgeable. And so I think it's kind of going through all of the turmoil and the ups and downs to figure out what you want. We did the first one, we loved it, but we learned that, man, that's a lot of money to have out there. There's a lot of risk. Then you have foundation issues, and what if that happened? Like, you are upside down big time, and guess what you can't do with a property that you're trying to sell for 450,000 that rents for 2,500? You can't rent it out, you would be losing. So we're like, let's try some of these smaller flips, right? So bought one, then bought a second one, and then wham, yo, permits, busted by the city. That took six and a half weeks. So now that I have a property that's listed, the very first one, and we're supposed to do a pretty good profit, you know, it only took us three and a half, four weeks to get it done, but it didn't sell right away. And so we pulled it off, did some staging, and it's still sitting there. I, in my mind, I'm like, what's wrong with it? But when I talk to, you know, my realtors, my resources are like, yo, average day on market right now is 30, 40, 50 days. So this is normal and this is flipping. So Hard Money Joe's like, you, you kind of had the, you know, uh, you know, damned if you do, damned if you don't, cursed, not cursed type of like your first one where you made 
made money, you sold it within three days, you know, this is more normal. And so it is, you know, some of these, you know, maybe lower income areas and you're doing a high end flip, a nice job that they, you know, will sit a little bit longer. So I'm battling this of like, holy crap, I've got one that won't sell. In my mind, when I had my panic attack, I was like, it won't sell, it's done, it's over with. Then I have the other, the Holman that has permit issues and we just got them and we're working on it. But I'm like, that's a couple more weeks and we got to do all these inspections. What if they bust us again? I mean, of course you, you that's what you do. You go through the, the worst of the worst in this. And so like, I was like hyperventilating. I was like really strong and it just woke me up and I just, I felt weird, like out of body. And I had to get up, I had to get out of bed and mainly to kind of look for answers, look at the bank account. And then the, the, the one that I'm doing, cause we've sold one. So I'm calling, I guess we'll call it the fourth shore acres. You know, the, the budget's just kind of increasing. That was a starting at like, we were going to do it at 63,000 with an ARV. Uh, and after, you know, is it re not after resale value? Anyways, I don't care. ARV, um, after renovation value, whatever the hell you call it, we were thinking it would be more in that 240 to 250 range. It came back at 235. So what does that mean? If you do the math, you've got uh, now my ARV. That's just what they're going to loan on. That's what the appraisers came back. So the lender goes with that, right? I if I sell for 260, it doesn't matter, right? They're just going off. We think it's worth 235. That's how much we're going to loan. So when I, you know, because I've done a few loans for them, now I can do 75% loan to value. You do that 235,000, and you times that by 0.75, and then I had a purchase price of 125,000 dollars plus. I have to give money Mike, he's the one who found it, $3,000. So I'm really at like a purchase price of $128,000. So just so I can go along with you, we got 235,000 times 0. 0.75 equals 176,250 minus 128,000 equals 48,250. Well, my budget was gonna be about 63,000. Now it's 75,800. Hundred. So what that means is the difference between seventy-five thousand, and I'm just going to do this quick because I forgot the number. Seventy-five thousand minus forty-eight thousand equals about twenty-seven thousand dollars, give or take. That the lending, the hard money loan, is not going to loan on. Now, if you remember, I did a home tour and I met Christian, and he said, "Look, all I look for is money in." money out. Like if I put in 10,000, then I want to get 10,000. You don't want to make 10,000. So what happened was in my panic attack, I'm like, oh my gosh, 125,000 purchase price, 3,000 to Michael, 75,800. So about 76,000 in renovations. I'm already looking at 200 and something thousand. I have, you know, just standard closing costs, which I'm, I'm about to go sign, but it's a little over 9,000, which if you've watched me at any length, you know that I've actually showed the paperwork. So closing costs, um, they're about, uh, I don't have my screen on, but it does, doesn't matter, about 9,000 to 9,500. So now we're already looking at 210,000 and an ARV of 235. I got realtor fees in there as well. So this thing is looking like, you know, you know, best case scenario. And I got hard money payments like, okay, we can walk away making 20,000 bucks. So it's not quite put in 20,000, get 20,000 out. It's a little bit less, but I am going to start giving you some good news as well too. But these are the things that again, you, I think you need to hear the raw honesty about when building this is like, if I'm going to get to a certain point in flips, you're going to have to learn, you know, the that sometimes you make five, ten thousand, sometimes you break even, and then you're going to have home runs. That's how you get that middle ground of making forty, fifty thousand per. And I talked to Hard Money Joe when I first started this. He goes, I have a guy who does a hundred flips a year, and the only thing he goes off of is if he can make thirty grand per flip. That's it. Well, I had completely forgotten about that. Right now, and, and you know, looking at the area, I think if we make a nice product, we may be able to get this thing up to 40, 250 in that range, right? And then now we do have a 30, 40 thousand dollar profit. So it is money in, money out. But when you have these panic attacks and you start freaking out, you don't think like that. Instantly, I was like, I'm gonna lose money. Instantly, everything's gonna go wrong. And I started computing the math of like, I am literally buying this house and doing a renovation just to sell and, and, and break even. And oh man, it, it's hard to relive that. So I'm gonna get back to my notes here. This also leads into why I purchased this house. And it's not your fault, guys. Um, but I was, building some, I was feeling some built up pressure to like get into another deal. And that might be the curse of this YouTube channel is that I'm trying to get you guys more content. And one of my flips is sitting and not selling. So there's really nothing to talk about. And the second one didn't have permits for six weeks. So I'm kind of like, and then I see the comments like, man, when are you going to post again? When are you going to post again? So I was like, fuck, I need to buy another property just for the, con like it got in my head. And so I'm not saying I rushed into sh sh the, to this 
fourth one. Um, sure, I'm just telling you that like it was great numbers and maybe there was a little bit of me like, yeah, I kind of want to get another property to, to get some videos going. But the other aspect of this is, I think I mentioned this at the beginning, is once you get into one flip and you learn the le to leverage this hard money and really how easy it is, you kind of get like addicted. And that was the other aspect of this was in my mind, I made a goal like, okay, I'm going to do my, my contractor says he can do three flips at a time. I'm going to do three flips at a time. And all you think about early on in the build phase is like, I'll get three of them going. I'll sell them. I can make, you know, 20,000, 30,000 on this one, 40, 50 on that, 30, 40 on that. Like, man, that's a hundred something thousand in a couple months. And, and you kind of just like, that's the way you think about it. But when this like roller coaster of emotions hits you, you know, when you get hit with like, you know, kind of the, the, the bad news bug, it flips in your mind. And now it's all worst case scenario. So again, I, you know, d like, did you really think I wanted to talk about this? This is the shit that I wanted to hide from you guys and just stay positive and like, hey, let's grow and let's build. But this has been eating me up and Hard Money Joe is probably watching this and you know, um, my contract and especially my wife, she's not watching it, she doesn't wanna see it, but um, she doesn't wanna watch herself on camera. Anyways, I've had so many conversations. My phone has literally been ringing and I have been making phone calls for four straight hours. And I talked to my contractor for 45 minutes, man, and like having him in my back, you know, pocket, just like, we got this shit, we're good. And But he also said like, hey, if you want to wholesale, go ahead, it's a lot of work. Um, but at the same time, you know, we got this. Sorry, my microphone fell. Am I still plugged in? Yeah, I'm good. And then I talked to Hard Money Joe, dude, and just, he, you know, him being able to tell me this is, what it's like this is you know you're gonna have ups and downs you know you you this is how you scale there's no other real way to do it and if you sit there and look at every deal as if you got to make a hundred thousand like you're never going to get into any maybe you do one but you know anything can go wrong with these so that was the other aspect of this and then i think that's obviously why like you know it's hard for these seasoned veterans and these gurus or whatever and i don't want to call them good a lot of these people have great insight and information they've done a, done a lot of it but they just completely skip past this whole part of like, take me back to house slip two, three, four, and the real nuts and bolts of it. Because a lot of times, like the ones that I listen to, they typically like, they'll talk quickly about like the pain point, the pain story, yeah, I hit rock bottom, and then boom, I'm out of it and I'm 100. And that's what we all see as viewers, as spectators is like, House flipping is the greatest thing in the world. I can do a hundred of these, I can get rich, but the, the mental side of it is, man, it, it's, it's something else. So I wanna be raw and honest with you guys and give you, you know, kind of these up-to-date style videos so that you always have somewhere to go back to, you know, and to lean on. So the, the other aspect of this is like, you know, everything happens for a reason. I'm a big believer in that. And, you know, might have done a little praying last night. And I think him hitting me with that wall of emotions made me get up and see that, you know, I'm doing okay. Like, okay, it's not as bad as I think. I do have some some fun sitting there. I can move over. And my wife and I talked and, and it got emotional for sure because this is stressful on relationships as well. But it also hit us of like, what do we love to do? What do we want to do? And I think we're going to really work hard to get in the next few months to get these three going and off and then maybe just do you know, one of these smaller ones in an area. But I think honestly what our niche is gonna be and my big takeaway is that we're gonna go more back to the passion project. Yes, it has a bigger chance to crash and burn, but at the same time, I want to get to where we're finding a, a bigger, more expensive property in a more desirable area and it costs more money up front. We gotta do a bigger renovation but every ounce of that has to be like picked out. You know, the colors, the scheme, everything's got to go. The kitchen design is really, really important. That's what you see in some of these small ones that are 700 square foot. Like you have this little cube. It's kind of like, yep, I mean, got all that stuff out. Go back with it and, and call it good. But the full design process is where I think what we're, we're going to do. Now I'm going to continue to, you know, carry on with this channel to show all of that. So I'm going to continue flipping and flipping. I think my big goal, you know, going forward too is I've had a lot of thoughts of maybe you know building a new you know on a lot like building something new construction maybe either trying to flip that or have a long-term rental i'm definitely going to probably get into some buy and hold here in a little bit to negate some taxes and other projects you know maybe like some kind of land deal with rv parks that's i think where it excites me now so the other aspect of this is when you have those like kind of beat down, I guess i'll just call it the panic attack for lack of a better term and that's probably exactly what it was you got to come out of it and one, I surrounded myself with great people, had some great conversations, but two, I was like, fuck it. Like, 
No, that fourth one, we're gonna go in there, we're gonna do a badass renovation, we're gonna make it look amazing, and we're gonna list that son of a bitch, and we're gonna make good money. In fact, it's had an ARV of 235, my goal now, we're gonna get 245 out of that thing. We're gonna each walk with 15, 20 grand. Like, why think negatively on this? And obviously I had to go through that to get where I'm at, but I it, it did motivate me. I'm still as scared and as nervous. I mean, I might be in a more scared, timid position than many of you who haven't even started flipping yet, but I do understand why you're not flipping because this is the, the things that you think about. But I can tell you that it is nice to be in this and be so knowledgeable about certain things and, and, to, and to be able to go through all these different areas and all these different properties and learn so much about it. I think it will help me, you know, as we, you know, as I advance in my career and what I want to do, you talk to some of these, you know, the, the guys who flipped for a long time or whatever, they do have a lot of war stories and a lot of pitfalls and they'll tell you privately and personally, whether they get it out on, you know, live on air, I don't know, but man, it is, that's one thing I would tell you right now is get into a community of people that are in the same spot and then the, you have some people who are available to help. Um, perfect segue into like our Ground Up Academy. I mean, you get access to, we're gonna be training weekly, bringing people in. You're gonna be able to hear from Hard Money Joe, have, you know, text conversations. We're really building out some cool systems. It's taking a little longer than we thought, but um, we're getting people in right away, plugged in. They're already making calls to, to, to find deals, wholesale, learn all that. And then we're going to start training. So if you want to enter that again, you can email me invest at realagentnow.com about the ground up Academy. But like promised earlier, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you out to the one that I'm actually buying today. Uh, with my wife and we get absolutely destroyed with mosquitoes, but you're going to see some of the updated plans. And then we found something that the main reason we went, we're going over budget big time. We found something, you know, obviously when my contract and that's the, Oh, other lesson. I'm never buying a property again without my contractor there. He went off of pictures. He was out of town. So that's why we kind of had that early. And then once he got there and saw some things, you know, that's what really kind of extended that budget. But I think we're still going to be good. So you're going to see what we got to add there. And then you'll get an, another vision of that property. And then we actually go check out home and flip number two, cause we got permits and we painted that bad boy. It looks pretty good. So just a quick update on both of our projects, because I know you guys are liking following, you know, those projects. So we'll go outside and check out both of those projects now, but whew, I almost didn't tell you guys all this shit. I almost didn't do it. So let's head out there. Oh, are you grabbing stuff? I just sold my poker table. Oh, okay. I just got done delivering it. I was just gonna do one last second run and like, like maybe all those books, I can take all the books out and maybe the ones that are still good. Sell them to somebody. Give away on my YouTube lives and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. My name's Travis. I'm Jill. Yeah, Travis, this is my wife Jill. Jill. Nice to meet you. This is Jed. Yeah, I got the uh, uh, being crazy. scared over here, but it's- We've been it's, in a bad, we've been in some joints, so it's okay. Yeah, it's a gutter. Okay. It's a gutter. Is high? Yeah, we, uh, my contractor came. It'll be a little bit more on the reno than we had originally thought when I was here, but um, I think we're going to still, we'll be all right. It's a hotbed right now. You saw the new, did you show her the new construction? I did. Oh, man. Everybody wants to fish. No HOA. Yeah. It's, it's a cool spot. Yeah, you got good fish in there, and, too. And these houses are, I know, while we're working, I'm, I'm going to be casting some lines. All right, well, I'll stay out of y'all's way. We're just going to be yeah. there 10 minutes, and then we'll be out. I think I put Right I already unlocked it. Yeah, thank you. Make by now. Yeah, my contract is already. Yep. <laughs> Speaking of that, do we have a lockbox? Yeah, in here. I think so. All right, let's go I'm check it out. It. Who'd have thought the uh, owner would come as soon as we came? But he's been cool. We'll slap the lockbox on it. Gonna hold this, Jetty. Jetty, can you Maybe hold that? Our little helper. We're going quick. So right away, we probably paint it white, like brick white. It's getting an all new roof, dark roof. Yeah, I'm sure we have a ton of leftover exterior paint. paint. Yeah, but I think it'll be to get it white. All these decks got to be removed. Yeah, just push it open. Yeah, we got no window. Glad it's locked, huh? All right. So, what do you think? Okay, so right away, I think what we're doing, obviously, is we're blowing out that wall, and it's going to be one big open area with, like, an island. Sorry. Mosquitoes. They're going to eat me up. They're not as bad as I thought, but they are here. So, big kitchen island. Yeah. Gut this out. Kitchen on. This is going to be the only change. So this room Keep is. The fan. This is that extra room, but it's got a flat roof. That's the metal roof. That. Oh, I'm getting. I'm getting bit, dude. Are you? Okay. No, no, we can. No, you are going. It's okay. Cause I'm gonna freak out a little bit. The mosquitoes. That's so fun. that's yeah. That roof is gonna be. 
Well, yeah. this one over here. So now, yeah, we could vault that whole room and make it massive over there. So it's either like a ginormous bedroom. Yeah, but I think like it smells gonna. Sorry, Jetty, get a bit. Yeah, come here, Jetty. Do you want to stay in the car, Jed? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's already getting. We can go check out our other one. We'll just check it quick. Okay. Here's the primary. Okay. No, I'm go. I'm leaving. Sorry. Getting bit like, like crazy. Yeah. So okay. Jed, it's bad. I'll turn this off. Flying in our car. Ah! Shut oh. it, Jed. Shut it. We oh, here, open it. <laughs> All right, so I had to get the wife and kid in the car. Mosquitoes are just absolutely atrocious right now. For some reason, they don't get me too bad, but my wife, she'll get like 200 mosquito bites to my one. So I will talk with her, but I'm gonna, there's been some updates on this and I'm gonna actually go to the studio here in a second. I'm gonna tour you guys, but I gotta have a real conversation with you about this property because it has really affected me. You know, there was a lot of talk of trying to maybe not buy it, you know, so I'll go to the studio and I'll explain that. But real quick, obviously tear everything out, flooring, you name it. But this room here, what we found out is in the back, this roof is flat. So we have vaulted ceilings here and this roof goes up and it's nice and vaulted. Well then they literally built this addition and it's just a flat roof. So that's why, you know, it's sagging and the, this is, I don't even know if you can tell, but man, you can see how it flexes. It's hanging down six inches. So basically, and he said it's not going to cost us too much more for framing, but we are basically going to rip the roof off of this whole thing and and reframe the whole thing because it's it's he went up there and it's sagging. So again, these are additional costs. Our original budget was about sixty three, sixty five thousand. We turned in our budget now at seventy five thousand eight hundred, so an extra ten thousand eight hundred bucks. But hopefully by vaulting that, you know, I'm like, can we just vault it then? He's like, yeah, dude. I mean, it. it once we're framing it, we can do whatever and it's really not gonna cost any extra. So we're gonna try and make this room massive and vaulted and, and, and really open things up. I wish, you know, once we, tomorrow we're supposed to close on it and then my contractor's gonna come in and just bomb this thing. I mean, there's mosquitoes, there's freaking spiders galore. It's just needs a good bombing to get rid of all this stuff. So um, all new, you know, uh, getting whacked. I'm gonna hop out of here, but no real changes. So we gotta redo all the flooring. We have a lot of flooring. We're gonna have to completely reframe that, that roof over there and vault it, fix a lot of the rafters that are rotten right now. And then my contractor's like, there's not much drywall that's gonna you know, be saved. So we're basically gonna rip this thing down to the studs. So that's an extra cost as well. So we're gonna be about $10,000 more than we thought. So. We got, uh, we're gonna go to the studio and I'll explain that and, and my emotional st state of that. But, and then after we're done with that, we're gonna go check on Holman, our second one that finally got permits and go do an update so that we can see it. Apparently my contractor already painted it white. So, so excited to get that one going. I got three flips going, none selling and emotionally getting my ass kicked, it feels like so. What we'll do, we're gonna go check on Holman, but right now I'm gonna go to the studio and explain you know, kind of where my mental state is with all this stuff. And then we'll go to, uh, to home and what do you think? Right away when you went in there, what's your thoughts? Um, I only got to see like 30 seconds of it, but it looks awesome. It's cute. Like it's big. It's almost six, almost 1700 square feet. So that one with the metal roof, that was like an addition back in the That's day. That's that big room that I showed you in the back. Yeah. That's a huge addition. But that's what we have to reframe. So that's what I need you to see because I think we're going to vault that up. And now it's going to be a big vaulted room. So it's like, is it, is it just go, a is bedroom? It off the side vaulted like this? Or is it going to be like Yeah, that? like see how it's vaulted up, like goes up like this. And then we'll go down the same on the roof line. And right now it's like it's vaulted up like this. And then it comes flat in. So yeah. I'm going to talk to him. All right, we got eight alive in there. So we're rolling out. We, we're going to... Um, Tomorrow when we close, my contractor's gonna come just Foggy. bomb it. Kill I everything. Go to like Costco and get like a case of freaking uh, mosquito spray or something. Yep, so we're gonna do that and then Foggy. bomb it and yeah. try and fog the whole, and he's gonna fog it too. And So you might get that uh, office set or give it to one of your workers, I don't care. Yep. I didn't have any luck, so I don't know. They, uh, whatever's in there, we'll just they'll take just and they'll either take what they want and then the rest goes in the dump. We got you. Sorry, that, that one bonus room, that's my own personal stuff. Yep. That's what I'm working on today, and then probably those books. Cool. And then the rest, I mean. Yep, whatever's in there. And then I talked to Nima, I was gonna, about signing tomorrow, and, and uh, he's, I think he's gonna try and either send someone up to me or just have me sign up, up where we're at, but we'll, we'll get it signed up. 
as soon as the buyer docs are in and everything. Whatever's clever. Yep. I guess he's doing better too. You know, his house was got ravaged, but um, I know. You hear it on the news, and then you finally meet people that you know that that actually got. Yeah, yeah, the heights got destroyed too. We have some friends that, man, they they took it hard down there. We got lucky. Yeah, we all got lucky. But okay, well, uh, yeah, I think we should close. You're holding that in your like your emoji or whatever. That is, (laughs) yeah. The channel junk. Yeah, that's cool. I know. I've got to do something. i got to tie in my channel to your house I was, somehow. Yeah, exactly. I was going to be like, give him some follows, man. What is your YouTube channel called again? Barter Mania. This will, anybody like sports cars, trading, go hit up Barter Mania. Give him a follow Come on, on, Travis, a little on YouTube, man. Yeah. If, Vintage collectibles, estate sales, garage sales, auctions, you name it. That's kind of my niche. I'll show you how to make some money on the side. If you want to source. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so go check out Barter Mania uh, Wait, one on, last question. on YouTube. Do you do consignment? Uh, on some heavier, heavier items. Yeah, I showed them some of my stuff. The MJ like, card. I um, yeah. graded my uh, Michael Jordan rookie card. Uh, what did I have? Did you see the vinyl record I got? Uh-uh. Motley Crue, signed by Vince Neil, Tommy yes. Lee, all the band members. No way. And that one's, uh, I already have it sold for like two grand. That's Woo-hoo. awesome. I paid $3 and it just stayed sold for it. That's like That's her favorite about. thing in the world. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's for sale. <laughs> After you make your 20, 30 grand on the sale. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay, we'll see. You. All right, have a good day, ma'am. I hope you understood. I want to buy the record. Yeah, just the estate sales, but that's cool. I checked out his YouTube channel. Go check it out, Barter Mania, for just being such a cool seller and guy for this YouTube channel, selling some cool stuff. He had the MJ card, if you remember, so that was really cool. He had some uh, Cardinal Red those Jordans too but they fell apart so anyways head to the studio and then we'll check out home and house flip number two I just like unbuckled him well, twice and he buckled himself back in it's never good when you find your uh, lockbox busted on the ground they broke in I guess the other day didn't do too much but now we don't have a key to get in oh did Ismail say anything he must just have the key on him let me call him and see if he's got one so yeah we had somebody break oh, yeah. into our house. I haven't seen this actually since the garage was torn down. Sir. Hey, what's up? What's up, Justin? Hey, is there a, a key around here? Key for what? Uh, oh, sorry, for Holman? Holman? Yeah, or do you have them? No, there was no key. Remember, I said they broke the lock. Yeah, do you have another lockbox? I do. I do, I just didn't have another key. Oh, okay. How you guys been getting in? Oh, that's easy. We got it set up. Okay, we're here. Is it? Can we pop in? Yeah. Not there? Nope. He might have went for lunch. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Or he might have finished too. I don't know. Okay. Uh, let me let me call him. I'll call you right back. Okay. Alright, All right, he's gonna try and find us a key. So the other day, some dickwads came and busted a, our our freaking lock off or lock box. Broke into the joint and apparently they stole a bunch of electrical wire, which you know that shit ain't cheap these days. And we're gonna get a key to get in or, or find a way to get in. But I just wanted, I haven't been here since they scraped this. This is what caused us to get the red tag, you know, was the garage gone. But the one thing, if you guys listen to that video of getting the permits, he said you gotta make sure, make sure, make sure that you build it 10 feet off the back property line. Now, there is no real like survey stakes and you see this fence here, but that fence is not, we're actually beyond that fence. So like this neighbor's yard is way bigger. I think our line goes back a little farther from what the surveys and everything said. So anyways, it's looking like, you know, somewhere right back there, 10 feet. So we got to build that thing right, you know, right in here. And then I think what we're going to do is tie it into the to the roof right there. But we're going to get in real quick and check out the progress. But as you see, we painted it black and white and it looks awesome. It looks so much cuter up in person. I like the black and white. I think it looks awesome. Yeah, well, I think it was leftover too from our last flip. So Yeah, just leftover so they were able cost to... Cost-effective? Trying to... <laughs> yeah, trying to do cost-effective on anything. That's what we're learning. Getting, get your butt kicked on flipping a lot. So wherever you can save it, you know, we got some good flooring. But we're going to get in and check everything out on the inside. And then what we have to do is get a bunch of work done, but get it, keep it exposed. And then now we have to go through those 14 different... Um, inspections so they got to come and inspect that plumbing the electrical and all that so we'll get in here and we'll go check out the inside okay we're yeah, just gonna check uh, it out real quick dude it looks awesome i love it, it looks different right yeah no it, it really stands out it pops so it's this One is not he goes, yeah, we can pay it, but you got to talk to the boss. <laughs> and, oh, we, we, you know, we, we'll pay you separate. Oh, I tried and, to steal your guys, huh? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we don't work separate. We only work for the boss. Good, man. That's cool. Oh, oh, 
okay. <laughs> so they gave him my number, but they, uh, it was a guy who wanted to go check out his house. So the electrical so looks guy, good. Is this a new box and stuff back here? Looks like new electrical box back here and everything. Yeah, that's looks what the good. Was for. Looks real good. Yeah, he might have finished already. And All then, the is done. as for the uh, property line in the back, are we, do we know where that is exactly? And, and then we know how to be 10 feet off of it? Someone broke our lock and stole stuff. Can I keep it? Sure. All right, you there? Yes, sir. Cool. Um, and then, are you able to see where our actual uh, back of our property line is? It should be marked in the back. Jackson, with a, with a survey? I don't know if you've looked at that or not. I mean, I look at the survey, but I mean, you got to go That's off like a... property line. Yeah, I mean, when you when you look at that, though, how do you like... Do you have to measure that from the street or what? You, no, 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 no. It's got a measurement on the survey. Right, but what are you pulling that measurement from, you know? Because right now, There's you look at it, it's just there, a bunch of... Huh? There's flags back there, isn't there? That's what I don't see the any. The surveyors are supposed to flag everything front and back. Right, but you don't know when they did that. They could have done that 20 years ago, you know? No, we had a survey, didn't we? No, well, I get, maybe. Yeah, I saw some orange flags up front. Okay, I, I don't. We're supposed to have a survey for every house. That's what I'm wondering because I don't see like a actual survey. I don't know. We'll we'll find it, I guess. But when are you gonna start building? Yeah. Or when do you? When's your goal of taking out the concrete and everything? Uh, this week. This week we're gonna take care of most of everything. Uh, I got the electrical done, the plumbing is done, the uh, uh, sewer is done, sweet. The AC is done, so the demo is done. What else? Okay. When are we? Uh, when are we gonna do an inspection? You think, or when do you want to do one? A draw? No. Well, that too, but also um, an inspection by oh, the an city. An inspection from the city. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and call it in on Thursday for Monday. Okay, cool. Uh, so we just got to make sure we have everything several. exposed. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. That's why I'm not. That's why I'm not covering any. That's why we haven't done any sheetrock. Perfect. I would have been sheetrock and taping and floating already. I know you would have. <laughs> I know. Uh, we would have been insulated, sheetrock, taping, floating, uh, everything. And uh, I gotta go pick up the flooring for that house as well. Drop it off. Okay. And uh, you said Wednesday is, or Thursday is possible to. To close on the next one? Uh, tomorrow, I think. If you do, that's going to be wonderful because I'll just clean out the garage and go ahead and take the flooring in there for that house. Yeah, I. it's looking like tomorrow we're going to close on Shore Acres. So I've been working on that all day, trying to get, you know, the signing done up by my house. And then I was, we were just there and actually the, the owner's there too. We were talking with him. He's, he's super cool. And it looks like as of right now, we're, we're good for tomorrow to close so i'll know probably more tonight and then and definitely tomorrow morning on that one but yeah as soon as we close and sign and it funds and that that's ours you can go to town you know gutting that thing too oh i'm gonna go fog it fog it bomb it do it <laughs> i know we went there we made it about three minutes and we got eaten alive I said it's not a good idea jackson to go right now oh i know we I'm, I'm, we just I'm chuck spray the inside of the house and the outside yeah oh I yeah just ordered 10 cans of that stuff <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, it's it uh. Okay. Yeah, buddy, it's, it's not it's not a pretty situation. I know. You, it's gotta get fogged inside and out, and then uh, and then mow the yard, close yard, that yep. one and the neighbors. Yep. Th that's gonna make our property look a lot more attractive too. I agree. Yep, we'll we'll mow that and, mow that empty lot and, down. And, and and the neighbors are gonna be happy that we mow their yard for free. Exactly. Um. Four foot yard. And then maybe they'll sell it to us. I'll get. We'll try and get a hold of them. That would well, be awesome. I'm going to pop it here, check it out, and then we're, we got to head back home. So I'll just hit you up a little later this afternoon and keep you posted on the uh, on Shore Acres. Yeah, check out the electrical there, the gas there, the okay. air conditioning. All that's done. Okay. I've already basically taken care of everybody on payment and all that stuff. So okay. uh, the demo is done on the garage. The demo is done on the inside. Uh, we're going to be ready. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about Thursday. I'm going to go walking with everybody first. Okay. Make sure that we, nobody missed anything, and right after that, then I'll go ahead and call in for an inspection. Okay. Uh, we'll call in uh, everything, so that's what I'm waiting on. All right, and then final, I'll just have maybe at the end of this week or middle of the week, I'll have Jill go through everything that's done, and then we can do a draw for you. Yeah, probably tomorrow we can go okay. through everything that's done, and and then we'll we'll set it up. I mean, I won't get it. I don't. I won't get any funds to end the next week anyway, but it's all good. Yep, I'll have her reach out when when you're ready for it. Just and then I'll have Jill go through that with you and put it in. Yeah, maybe even this afternoon we'll go through it. Okay. Uh, so that so that way uh, we're ready for this next house. So we we'll use the same funds over there. Okay, perfect. Let's do it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Kind of toss them around. <laughs> I know. Exactly. That's part of scaling these flipping businesses. So, all right, man. Yes, um, I'll, I'll hit you up a little later this afternoon then. Sounds good, Jack. Okay. Bye. Bye. -bye.
All right, we made it in. She is gutted. Oh, that's the new window he, he put in. Okay, we're really not much to see. Well, yeah, all the drywall. And so now they've done all the electrical and plumbing. Oh, it's a hot mess in here. And they can't put any of the drywall back, which it's in here and ready to go. Why can't they? Because now we have to go through all the inspections. Oh, okay. So he's going to call for inspection uh, Thursday to come out Monday morning. So he should have everything basically done. All the electrical will be roughed in, all the uh, HVAC, and then all the plumbing. And then it's all exposed. And they can do it. And then we have to do a shower pan test, he told me. So you build it, and then you put a, like a rubber liner or something, a shower pan in there. Just and then you have sure. to fill it full of water, and it has to hold for 24 yeah, hours. I know exactly Okay, ready? And I did not know that. So he says, dude, actually it's gonna be really quick. Once they get approved, the electrical's all good and all that, putting it all together, he said, no problem. They'll cool. tape texture, float it, all that, so. Cool. Well, it's all here, it's awesome. Do you wanna lock it and then go back out the? the yeah, we'll just lock it up and, and call it good, but Come out this, this way, is where then. we're at right now. Six weeks, six weeks of sitting. You know, when we came in last time, we were so excited. They had almost everything done. They had all the cabinets in here ready to put back and then boom, slapped with the, uh, the uh, you know, whatever the hell you wanna call it. And then next thing you know, you gotta wait six weeks to do it. Pain in the ass, but now, you know, I've learned a lot from that and same, you know, I've documented it. So you guys should be able to do it quick. If I were to have to do it again today, I think I would be able to get everything in and done within two, three days, at least to where like the drawings are right. I know everything. And then I would be calling them and pushing it through and maybe you could get it all done. And, two weeks or something like that. So huge lessons learned starting these flipping businesses for sure. So, all right. So at the end of the day, I have recovered somewhat and I'm more motivated to get going and to, you know, get into this flipping, but I do have some new kind of like goals and strategies, I think, and it might include like maybe building something new uh, and flipping it that way. So you got to follow along with this channel. My mind's going crazy a million miles an hour at the end of the day. You know, with real estate investing, you've got to be able to keep your cool. You got to keep yourself around people that can help you keep your cool. And I just kind of went through it for a little bit and we're out of it. But I need to bring up one more very important point and do that. I need to show you my screen. I actually have been getting so many of you emailing me to join the Ground Up Academy, but here's something that I didn't even know about. If you're sitting out there and you're way more liquid, if you've got a ton of capital and you don't know really how to get into this game, you know, just like this, I actually got an email and I did a full Zoom call with uh, this gentleman and he said, hey, I've discovered you and your wife's YouTube channel. I love the content. Are you looking for an investor to flip? I'm super liquid currently and have been looking to get into it for a few months, but analysis by paralysis. I can handle some home purchasing and funding. So as you can see there, this is probably if you're in the same boat where you've got a lot of liquid cash or capital. I didn't even know these things were available, but I hit up Hard Money Joe and I said, what's the best thing? He goes, dude, book the call. If you are looking to you know, get into the hard money side, the lending side of it, we can have a private call with Hard Money Joe and he will break down exactly how to do that and it's some juicy returns. So shoot me that email, invest at realagentnow.com. Same one that we're using for the Ground of Academy, but if you're more liquid, you've got a lot of capital, you wanna learn how you can you know, possibly invest into a lot of real estate deals and not have to worry about flipping or anything, you just get your monthly check, your monthly return, shoot me that email invest at realagentnow.com and I will help you book a private one-on-one -on -one free call with Hard Money Joe to, to learn if that is something you wanna do. If you are somebody who's going to be touring properties, I think you should probably go back and watch this video. I tour it, I bring my contractor, we go through all the costs and I actually interview a guy who's done 40 house flips at the end of it. You're not gonna to wanna to miss it. So go check out that video right there.